Good morning, folks. Hopefully the earthquake uptick is over. Got a day without big ones, but some volcanic activity is making news. Solar wind is in flux, and we've got another Mars update. But we began at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star to be not so utterly calm as before. Multiple small CMEs have left the sphere, none really threatening our planet, however. The solar flaring is about on par, no big events, and the Umbra's center disk are far less magnetically complex than they were yesterday. Now a nice magnetic separation, especially in the largest grouping. The remaining magnetic mixing potential shifts towards the limb, but we'll keep an eye open for morphing anywhere on our star today. Solar wind? There's the start of the impacts we were expecting. Orange density peak this morning also presenting a shift in phi angle, the blue, raising the BZ in red and white up top, and if that tips south today, we'll have geomagnetic storms. Eyes on it. The maker of those oncoming streams and the big Vanuatu quake from two days ago are the now departing coronal hole structures. More are coming in on the south, but this major opening is about done with us for now. Disaster app testing shows the departure of those holes and the retrospective crest peak of the watch scores on the day of that earthquake, coming back down now along with the sunspot scores. Both the size and sunspot numbers peaked on quake day, now also beginning to come back down. No big quakes without that energy now, but the volcanoes have been making news, two of them on watch in New Zealand actually with a major earthquake swarm beneath them. That's a lot of shaking there. In Taiwan, a mud volcano eruption was followed by the appearance of ore fish, often credited with predicting earthquakes with their beachings. Top story today is this, a fantastic paper that not only hints that Mercury and the bigger planets absolutely play a role in earthquakes, which is something we hit on in our book, Big Time, but they cited our earthquake paper from last year. It is the first citation of our earthquake studies, and that is pretty cool. Now your Mars weather report with Dr. August Dunning. Last week on Mars, the lack of solar storms and the subsequent high ultraviolet input throughout the week caused diffuse water ice clouds associated with the Aphelion cloud belt and persisted throughout the afternoon in the mid-latitudes. It is clear that further north, dust storm activity was relatively scarce over the Martian northern plains. Tiny dust lifting events were spotted near the edge of the north polar cap. Local dust storms were observed across many regions of the southern hemisphere, especially in the lowlands of the Hellas Basin. Once again, dust lifting over Salus pushed northward and made conditions in Valmarineris murky. Dust hazes over Arcadia and near Olympia were observed on multiple days, with the persistent dust storm around Olympia for all five days of the recording period. Both rovers Curiosity and Gale Crater and Opportunity and the Endeavor Crater encountered storm-free skies throughout the week. I'm watching the predicted collision of the CME that missed Earth but is being dragged over by the magnetic field lines shown here on spaceweathernews.com on the Enlil spiral for the weather event on April 24th. It's summer in the Northern Hemisphere on Mars, so it's pleasant. It's only minus 101 degrees at night. Well, it's not quite as cold here in the United States, but we've got our own problems. When I said welcome to the future with massive hailstones, I meant it. As the planet changes more and more, the hail will get bigger, often stick together in super clusters, and with increasing wind speeds we're talking, your skull wouldn't stand a chance. Again, welcome to the future. It is Saturday, folks, so our Fly on the Wall podcast is incoming in just a few hours. If you're not a member over at suspiciousobservers.org, it is just $4 a month. Head on over and click Become a Member in the menu bar. And if you're looking to check out that book I mentioned, it's at otf.cells.com. We've got pressure and radar forecasts, followed by current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. at the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.